One of the things you're gonna spend the most time doing inside ProPresenter is utilizing media. Whether it be background media, foreground media, it's going to be full of media. It's a media presentation tool. So let's talk about how to utilize the image and video bin to its fullest to make your utilization even better. So down here at the bottom, you'll see your video and image bin. Now a couple things to point out is that you have background videos and foreground videos. Now the difference between background and foreground videos is background videos are generally for uh, support behind text and these don't have audio, whereas foreground videos are more like mini movies or video clips that do have audio and that's why they reside in two separate areas. Now you also have an area for purchase media and then you can create other playlists. Now down here at the bottom at the gear icon you can create a new playlist, a new hot folder, and a new group folder. Now group folders are just for organization but what hot folders do, so we're going to create a new hot folder and then we're going to go and find a place. So we're going to go to the desktop and we're going to go grab um, Pro5 Media and we're going to go grab all of Centerline New Media's uh, media and we're going to hit OK. And this is going to create a hot folder of all of the media that's inside that folder. Now if I uh, open up Pro5 Media here and I go inside this Centerline New Media folder and I get rid of the Sunrise Water 1, I'm just going to drag it out of here, you'll see it immediately remove itself from this hot folder because the hot folder live updates itself. Now all I have to do is drag it back in and there it is. Hot folders are very helpful for organizing your media. The other thing that ProPresenter does to help organize you is by automatically managing your media. Much like iTunes, when you add media inside ProPresenter, it can automatically move it to a centralized location. So to do this, we're going to go to ProPresenter and go down to Preferences. And under the General Preferences, you'll see Media Repository, and you can say Manage Media Automatically. And what that's going to do is it's going to take all media added inside ProPresenter presenter and it's going to put it into this directory above. So you can do this and you can change where that directory is. The other thing that ProPresenter allows you to do with your images and videos is actually alter them to get the most out of them. You can apply video effects, video coloring, all sorts of different things. So let's see how this works. So we have a background running and I'm going to leave this up so we can see the difference between these two backgrounds in the end. So we're going to right click and go to media properties and we can start altering some different settings. We can set different thumbnails, we can also set different in and out points and we can actually hit play and watch this live update as we change different settings. This next tab has some different scaling options that we can set in here, as well as we can flip the image. So maybe we wanna flip the image upside down and we wanna do an upside down background. We can also affect the play rate so we can either have it go uh, faster or slower. And so now we have a really, really fast version of this, or we can um, kick it down and have it go a little bit slower. We're gonna go back to 100%, and you can see how that looks there. Now, um, let's go into this next area, and this is actually different video effects we can apply. So under here, we have some color filters, so we can just do a straight up color filter, and we can choose which color we wanna filter it by, and uh, mess around with that there. Um, we can also go and do a sepia tone, which is gonna um, desaturate the image. We can do a color invert, which is gonna invert all our colors. We could do a gray invert, which is gonna give us a black and white invert and we can do heat signature which sometimes does some funky things but other times can look pretty awesome. We're going to do no effect for right now and then we're going to go down here to our uh, other color settings. What I'd like to do is actually kick up our saturation a little bit and get some more vibrance out of this image and then we're going to kick up our contrast and kick up our brightness so we can see a little bit more of what's going on in the background here and uh, now that we have that, we can also mess around with this hue slider, and this is actually going to change the hue of all of the different colors. So it's not just a one color overlay, it's a multi-color overlay. So I like the colors that we have going on in here. Next, above here, we have some different blurring options. So I'm going to click on image blur. And I'm just going to blur this out, and you'll see that the whole image is blurring out. And again, this is live updating and showing us the different um, effects that we have going on here. Now we can also try an edge blur. I'm going to kick this all the way up here and you're going to see that we get some really interesting nice look going on here. You know and then if we maybe went back and we kicked our play rate down to maybe 50% here you'll um, see that we just get a really unique looking background that's very very different than the original. 
Not only can you apply those video effects to your video, but you can also have multiple instances of them in your library. So here's a playlist that I created, and this first one is the original clip. All I did was do copy and then paste, and I went through and altered these. Now these are all based off of the exact same video clip, so this has been blurred and has a new color added to it, and as you can see, this one's been flipped and has a different blurring to it, and this one's been uh, altered and actually slowed down, and we've changed the color. So all of these different clips are all based off of that exact same video. Last, let's look at how easy it is to add media from your image and video bin to playlists and to documents. So we're gonna grab this soft color and all we have to do is click on it and drag it to whatever slide we want it to be the background of. When we drag it into a slide, it will automatically be the background and when you click it, it's gonna show that background and it will hold that background until a new background shows up in another slide and that'll fade out. Again, it's using the global settings for our backgrounds here. So if we wanted a different transition, we could switch to swap. And when we click on this background, it will swap our backgrounds out for us. Um, so we'll set this back to dissolve and hit done. Uh, the next thing is if we want to add in a background as a standalone slide and not actually underneath text. And all we have to do for this is just click and drag it in between. And now we'll add in a new slide of that background. Now to add in foregrounds, this is very similar. All we have to do is click and grab our foreground element and we can add that into the slide. We can also grab foreground videos and add them right into playlists for easy playback. So there are a lot of options as you can see to utilize media inside ProPresenter. <laughs>